Hi, this is Judith Karakshini, Salman Alana and Manos Berlakis, and this is case 155 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is a case illustrating the double DK crust technique. The patient was a gentleman who had a non-ST elevation myocardial infarction and was found to have significant disease with left main stenosis as well as three vessel disease, but normal ejection fraction. He was offered coronary bypass surgery, but he declined, and he instead opted for percutaneous coronary intervention. He came to the cath lab, and as we do for most complex cases, even though he did have normal ejection fraction, we did a right heart catheterization that showed an array pressure of 8, a wedge of 19, and normal cardiac output and index. Therefore, hemodynamic support was not needed. We decided to start with the right coronary artery, and that's frequent the case when we do left main PCI. It may be safer to first revascularize the right coronary artery, assuming it's technically feasible, before tackling the left main, so as to minimize the extent of ischemia when PCI of the left main is performed. So we have here a calcified vessel with significant proximal stenosis, good quality distal vessel, and this actually was within a previously placed stand. So we wired, we predilated, and actually the stent was expanding well. We did intravascular ultrasound, which is critical because uh, we had a case of stent failure. So we want to make sure we did not have any underexpansion, and there was some underexpansion in certain portions of the stent with heavy calcification of 360 calcification. So we decided to... Um, try initially with uh, high pressure balloons. We had an MLA of 4.5 versus 9.2 in the reference area. And uh, actually a 3.5 by 15 millimeter at high pressure expanded nicely. He did receive uh, a 3.5 by 32 millimeter drag eluting stand. And that was post dilated at high pressure with an NC balloon with a nice result and geographically. And of course, IVOS is important again. And we do see that there is good stand expansion. There is still calcification. There is oval uh, uh, shape of part of the vessel. But uh, the area is actually good. So overall, we were satisfied with the result. And uh, we decided to continue with left main. Sometimes if the right coronary intervention is complicated, and we have to give a large amount of contrast and to radiation if the patient becomes unstable, then we often will stop and stage the procedure for the left main. But in this case, the patient was doing fine, so we decided to move on. And this is the anatomy. We have a diffuse disease in the left main, significant disease in the proximal circumflex, diffuse disease into the LAD, as well as disease uh, into the um, marginal, the diagonal branch. There were also previously stents, so we have instant stenosis there as well, which was one of the factors um, of actually uh, referring the patient to surgery in the first place, but once again, he opted for percutaneous coronary intervention. So looking at the left main bifurcation here, it is uh, Medina 111, again with heavy calcification. This is uh, intravascular ultrasound that demonstrate diffuse disease. We do have the previous stand. Once again, there is uh, significant calcification and significant stenosis. And then we we'll come back uh, all the way to the left main, which is also fairly heavily calcified. And these are the measurements. Once again, we have significant disease. And this is the other uh, bifurcation. We have disease into the proximal LAD and disease into a diagonal branch. The medial AD actually here appeared to be okay, but there was significant disease in the diagonal as well as the proximal LAD. We wired uh, both vessels. We did predilatation of the diagonal branch. And here is intravascular ultrasound. Again, very important to make sure we have expansion of the stents. And that's demonstrate that um, for the most part, the stents are expanded. So we placed uh, a 2.75 by 20 millimeter drag eluting stent was post dilated and that um, uh, provided uh, a nice result. There was disease in the middle AD that was covered with a long drag eluting stand. Again, once again, IVUS. And as uh, it's a consistent theme for any complex PCI, for heavily calcified lesions especially, 
doing intravascular ultrasound or optical coherence tomography, it's critical to make sure that we have good expansion. Once again, here we have this oval deformation. Uh, we do have the bifurcation of the left main, diffuse disease, calcification, but overall expansion is okay. So now we have to treat this bifurcation, the left main uh, bifurcation, and also the LED diagonal. And our plan was to do a double DK crash. So DK crash for the diagonal LED and also DK crash for the circumflex left main. And uh, the beauty of this is that having two tandem bifurcations is that one can place a stand into the circumflex, a stand into the diagonal, but then cover both sides of the main vessel using a single stand from it, coming from the LAD all the way into the left main. But of course, before we do that, we have to expand the circumflex, and this one was not expanding uh, very well. The mid part was okay, but the osteal was not. So we ended up doing intravascular lithotripsy with 80 pulses that uh, eventually expanded the lesion. So now we're part of the double DK cross. This is the first bifurcation. We do have a drag eluting stand coming from the diagonal into the LAD with a balloon into the LAD. The stand was deployed. Then uh, we confirmed patency of the vessel. We did uh, crush that uh, diagonal stand, rewired with uh, a workhorse guide wire. And then uh, after doing that, we were able to uh, proceed with uh, kissing balloon inflation. We have good expansion of the stand. Now the next step is to do the same thing for the more proximal bifurcation. So we did play, uh, we did place uh, a uh, stand in uh, um, the circumflex coming all the way into the LED that was then crushed with a 3.5 millimeter balloon in the left main. We rewired and did the kissing balloon inflation. So now we essentially have done the first steps of the DK crush for both the LED diagonal, but also for the distal left main bifurcation. So the next step here is to stand from the left main to the middle LED and then rewire both branches and do the final kissing balloon inflations. So that's exactly what we did. This is a 3.5 by 30 millimeter drag eluting stance. When we have a big size mismatch, the left main here should be much larger than either the LED or the circumflex. Having a stand that can go at lar to large diameter is very important. And we know that the 3.5 a Zion stand can go all the way to 575. So this was deployed. We did the proximal optimization. And then uh, we rewired the diagonal and did the kissing balloon inflation. Rewiring was challenging, so we used a dual loom microcatheter. And then we did the same thing into the circumflex. This was actually more challenging because of the acute angulation. But uh, using the dual lumen um, was critical to achieving success. And this is the lesson that whenever you have difficulty rewiring into a um, side branch after standing the main vessel, one option is to use a dual lumen microcatheter. Another one is different wires and different bands, such as a polymer jacketed wire. And this was the final kissing balloon into the left main. Once again, we did uh, intravascular ultrasound. We see that there's good stent expansion all the way into the LED. Uh, coming back, the diagonal, the left main. Here's the left main uh, uh, bifurcation. And that provided a nice result all the way to the left main. And this was in geographically the final result. Once again, good flow in both diagonal, LED, as well as circumflex. Several lessons from this case. Uh, the first ones is uh, that patients with complex disease like this one ideally should have had coronary bypass, especially given previous stent failure. However, the patient is the ultimate decision maker and this particular patient chose percutaneous coronary intervention. In general, once we have normal ejection fraction, we do not need hemodynamic support, but in complex cases like this with left main involvement and right coronary artery involvement, doing a baseline hemodynamic assessment with the Schwann guns is very important before deciding about support. For any case of uh, instant stenosis, but also for any complex case, intravascular imaging is critical. Using um, various techniques for rewiring the side branch can help. 
In this case, we used uh, a dual loop microcatheter that helped. We also had severe calcium and had to use intravascular lithotrips in the proximal circumflex. And what is uh, uh, more unique about this case is the using of the double DK crust technique, which essentially it means we had two bifurcations, one next to each other, LED diagonal and uh, the left main into the circumflex and LED. We extended both uh, the side branches, that is the diagonal and the circumflex, and crushed the stem proximally, and then covered both of the origins of those vessels with a single main vessel stand, in this case from the left main to the mid LED, and then rewired both the diagonal and the circumflex and did the final kissing balloon inflations. So double DK crush, essentially we're using three stands instead of four, doing separate the LED diagonal and uh, the uh, left main distal bifurcation. Thank you.